I rub both sides. Excess falls into the pan. Hello and welcome to Hershberger's Miracle Homestead. I'm Dorothy. And I'm Martha. We are ready to proceed with our pork chop and our sweet potato supper. These are the pork chops that have been marinating, but before we do anything with the pork chop, we need to get the potatoes in the oven. They bake longer than the pork chops do. I have scrubbed them with a vegetable brush, and the smaller ones are in one casserole dish, and the larger ones are in another. Smaller ones will bake on 350 for about two, two and a half hours, and the larger ones will take from two and a half to three hours. We, of course, won't be using all of these for supper, but we love having sweet potatoes in the refrigerator and also being able to mash up some to use for other dishes. We need to cover these with foil and we use a heavy duty foil. I used to wrap each sweet potato individually, but we found this works just great. You just need sure. something to contain the heat. Sure does. Oops, a hole in the foil. Can you patch it? I think so. I think that works. The oven is preheated. We're going to drop them in the oven and talk about how we harden them off and stuff. <laughs> okay, the sweet potatoes are from the 137 pounds of sweet potato harvest that we did. And we've been asked the question, how do we harden them off and how do you store them? More how we harden them off. So I will let Dorothy go through those steps with you. We did not wash them just rub most of the dirt off and put them single layer in tray boxes. We have a lot of cardboard boxes that we got from a grocery store that you could have them laid out very nice single layer. Then we had them out in the sun during the day because you want it to be 75 to 80 degrees. They need the heat that breaks down the sugars and causes them to become sweeter and also helps harden them off. Nights, we would have them in the garage because the nights started getting pretty cool. We did that for about two weeks. Then we moved them into the Miracle Barn, which is a climate-controlled building. We kept them in the, in the tray boxes. They're, they're not stacked all on top of each other. They are uh, basically single layer in a cool, dark place. And that's how we'll keep them from here on. And when we're ready for a sweet potato, just go out and shop in our barn. I love going out this morning and bringing all those sweet potatoes in. <laughs> We're going to back up where we pounded them and marinated them and proceed with pork chops. Nothing beats a tender and juicy pork chop. So what we're going to do is with a meat mallet, we're going to pound it and then we're going to marinate it in soy sauce in this Ziploc bag. So we're ready to start with the pork chop. We'll do one and then I'll bring you in and you can see how actually how thick it is. And the pounding of it breaks down the muscle fibers and tissues. We will pound away. Sorry, buddy. It won't take long. Now we'll turn it over and pound the other side. And we'll drop it in the Ziploc bag. Now we'll come in and do the rest of them and I'll show you how thick it is. Okay, you can tell from there that it is a thick piece of meat. After this is pounded, we will compare this to one that's not pounded. I move this back to the edge because my knuckles are hitting the countertop. If I have it close enough here, my knuckles don't hit the countertop. Yeah, I went down about half. Here, I'll hold this up so you can see it from this angle. So we will put this one in the bag. Move the soy sauce back here because the pounding on the island is vibrating the soy sauce. <laughs> When we did the olive garden salad and had made pork chops three different ways, this is the brown sugar rub recipe 
that we had used along with the Olive Garden salad. I just realized, I think this was off camera, but all the meat is in the bag here. The soy sauce is going into the meat now. Now we'll take it off. Close it up. Try to get the air out that you can. Zip it shut. And then kind of work the soy sauce in the meat. Just to make sure we have no leakage accidents in the refrigerator. Should there be a little hole in the bag, we're going to put it in the pan. So we'll be putting this in the refrigerator and it should be there at least 8 hours, preferably anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. We're going to tuck this away in the refrigerator and then tomorrow morning we will turn it over and work it up a little bit. And up until the time we're ready to use it. We'll be doing that every once in a while. Okie dokie. Usually I'm not dressed like this to cook, <laughs> but I had been doing bookkeeping. And so I just stayed in what I was dressed for that. So anyway, here we go. Olive oil for browning. And you'll want a hot skillet. Whew. Maybe I should turn it down just a bit. Okay, now to flip them. You can make them without browning them like this, but browning just really adds a lot of flavor and just makes them so much better. Okay, I think that'll do it for this. And now for the other three. I'm not adding any seasonings to it here because the seasoning will be added into the rub. Okay, I think it's about time to flip these. And do about two minutes on this side. Okay, I think we're ready to turn the burner off. Get these out of here. Now this is what I don't like about having to sear meat or to brown meat <laughs> is the mess it makes. Okay, we'll meet you on the other side to put the rub on this then. Okay, for the rub, we need brown sugar. In here I have onion powder, garlic powder, and Italian seasoning. Just put that in there. And here we have salt and pepper. You could salt and pepper them when you brown them, I suppose. You wouldn't have to put it in with this, but this works well too. Just mix this all together. And it works better just to get in with it with your hands. I rub both sides. Excess falls into the pan. I do like to let the pork chops rest just a little bit after they're browned before you put the rub in.
Okay, I'm going to clean up. Martha's going to come put this in the oven. In the oven it goes. Sweet potatoes are ready, pork chops in the oven, and baby lima beans are on the stove. And while that all is coming together for us, we want to give you a hearty welcome to our new subscribers. Has our channel been growing? It certainly has, and, and we love it. <laughs> and that's exciting. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, welcome, welcome. We hope you enjoy it. And we try to respond to all the comments that come in. Martha normally responds to the ones that are on the videos, and I normally respond to the ones that are on Chirping the Verse for the day. Good teamwork there. <laughs> and if this is your first time with us, we hope you watch some other of our videos. And if you join, consider subscribing. And we always appreciate when people like and comment on our videos. We love that interaction with you. And also for those of you who share um, our videos on your social media, that really helps us. And we appreciate that very much. Amen. We do have an affiliate link for Amazon in the description. And if you shop through that, we do get a small commission, and we appreciate everyone who has done that. It's and, been very helpful. And it's no extra cost to you. So thank you very much. <laughs> I like to peel the sweet potatoes while they're still hot or at least fairly warm. Pork chops. Let me pull you up close so you can see them while they're bubbling. Well, as you can see, the pork chop is out of the oven. Now we will let it rest for five minutes before we disturb it. So I have the timer set for five minutes. All righty, here we go. And here we have it, folks, brown sugar rub pork chop. This was a yummy supper, and we were glad for the leftovers. The recipe for the brown sugar rub pork chops is in the description. We want to thank you, folks, for joining Dorothy and I in the kitchen as we made our supper featuring the pork chops. And now for the golden thought. Always be careful with your words because you never know how many times it's repeating in somebody else's head. The words that you speak that people hear is planted in their head. And how many times do they hear those words repeated? Are they uplifting or are they detrimental to them? And I've heard already that you should even be careful with your jokes. Your subconscious mind doesn't know it's a joke. So even in your joking and, and kidding back and forth, be careful with your words because it plays in someone else's head as well as their words are playing in your head. So that's a responsibility that we have. And even the words that we're rolling around in our own head, be careful with your thoughts. If they're taking down rabbit trails that shouldn't, get a hold of those thoughts, get them back and go down a rabbit trail that is healthy and good for your thoughts. So that when you do speak words, that it can be positive, uplifting, and encouraging words. So those words not only go through your head again, but they go through someone else's head. So always be careful with your words because you never know how many times it's repeating in somebody else's head. We hope you've been blessed, encouraged, and inspired. And with that, God bless.